Welcome back to South by Southwest. My name is Paul O'Brien with Media Tech Ventures. I'm really excited to talk to the IBL community because yesterday the mayor of Austin pointed out that this is where the entire creative industry of the world descends on Texas for the sake of innovation. I'm sitting here with Iris and Rafa. We're going to have a bit of a conversation about what's going on in media innovation, but also venture capital and diversity and the younger population that's getting a lot more involved in the creative class and the creator class and what it means to be putting money to work. Iris, let me start with you. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great tonight. You're in you? from Washington, right? Yes, I am currently from Washington, D.C., but I'm also studying at Emory University in the Atlanta area. Studying still? Yeah. I'm <laughs> and yet doing what? I am also currently running a new fund in D.C., as well as opening my own ESG-based startup. No kidding? Yeah. ESG, for the sake of everybody, ESG <laughs> means what, though? Environmental, social, and governance factors. So it's how we're using resources, um, how labor rights and diversity is being worked out, and corporate governance, tax auditing, things like that. No kidding. Yeah. Fantastic. Rafa, how about you, man? What, what brings you back to Austin? You're from Sp Spain, if I recall, but you got some roots in Dublin. Exactly. Tell, tell us a little about what you're working on. Well, so my company is called Volograms, and what we're doing basically is enable user-generated user content for the metaverse, augmented virtual reality, and stuff like that. And yes, I am Spanish, even though uh, our company, Cyrus, is based in Dublin. And you have the question on the top of everyone's mind in town, I think. <laughs> Aside from what the heck is an NFT, which is, in fact, what is the metaverse? <laughs> Maybe lead us a little bit with that. What's, what's your characterization? I love the idea of creators being able to participate in that. Yeah. But what is that? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of controversy because there's not a not a proper definition for it. For me, basically, the metaverse is yet yet another layer on top of the internet, right? So we interact with uh, with this layer using uh, headsets like VR or, or augmented reality VR or AR headsets, and uh, and we can interact with everything that is around us. So we can add layers of information into the real world or create full virtual worlds. So this allows you know for all this blockchain madness, uh, new ways of of create of making money and new ways of uh, you know boosting the economy uh, but but the problem that we're trying to solve is actually creating this content because right now most of the content that you end up in experiencing in, in the metaverse is created by artists by developers by professionals in general right. and there's nothing like user generated content and if you look at your phone right now most of the content that you're probably consuming on YouTube on Instagram on whatever platform is created by other users um, so we we need something like that for the metaverse if we think that the metaverse is, is going to end up becoming the next computing platform. No no question. It's a lot like what Ibble is doing, which is why we're on this platform, that it, it enables people to communicate and collaborate in ways that it used to be only accessible to the engineers or the designers or the creators that knew how to do that. Very cool. A lot of that's happening with people younger than I am, obviously. <laughs> People younger than I am, how how while still in school did you did you conceive of or, or think to move into venture capital? What yeah, tell us about that. I actually um, moved into venture capital having been in startup before in high school. I exited an ed tech startup um, back my sophomore year. I published a economics research paper that same year, and through that I got to know people, and then settled on Summit Venture Capital, and that's where I was for three to four years. And then actually coming into college, I was already in the VC industry. And then um, in college, I met a lot of people who were into diversity and environmental science initiatives, and that's how I moved into the ESG sector specifically. And then after raising a funding round for a Swiss ESG data startup, I was like, hey, you can make money and do good for the world. Because um, the younger generation understands that we're going to have to live in this world. Like, we can't have um, like oil rigs and everything everywhere without clean and renewable energy. Uh, we need to fix diversity and labor rights. Um, we need transparency when it comes to um, corporate auditing and things like that. And so our previous generations haven't filled that gap really. And so that's what my firm and is trying to do right now. You support yeah. that. Yeah. Wonderful. What, what brings you both to Austin, I shared a bit of a notion of a creative class getting here, and, and mm -hmm. you know that's why we're doing what we're doing. But there is something to be said for your industry and, and even my industry, and then that that passion for diversity and funding people in more meaningful ways mm -hmm. and, and supporting other industries, other ecosystems mm -hmm. like the environmental sciences. Why 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 here? What brought you back to to South by Southwest or to Austin? Yeah, so I think it's because this is the place where you can find the most creative people probably in the world all together in many different kinds of areas like music, like arts, everything. 
And what we're building is a creator tool at the end of the day. So if we want uh, a lot of people to end up using it, we have to first put it in the hands of the people that are actually going to create things that are really meaningful and have the potential of going everywhere. Yeah. So I think that's the main reason. That find, find the right people. Find the, find the tribe. Exactly, yeah. Same thoughts? I mean, it's yeah, probably similar, similar though, right? Similar, it's similar, definitely. Um, when you think venture capital, you immediately think Silicon Valley, but you're missing out on a lot of the smaller up and coming cities with more younger startups. Yeah. Um, for example, here in Austin, we have Capital Factory. Yesterday, I was at the startup crawl, and you get to see through Scuttlebutt investing all these new ventures that are popping up that might not have access to the large New York or VC, um, New York or Californian-based VC funds. Yeah. And I'm just coming around here, checking out what everyone is doing, and hopefully. Um, raising some funding rounds for that. You're out, you're out of New York or Washington? Um, Washington, D.C. Right. Um, and you got in when? You got in yesterday or I today? got in Thursday morning, took a look around Austin. And Same, right? Thursday? Well, no, I arrived yesterday. It was oh. incredibly <laughs> cold when I arrived. Like, no, I know. That's right. It was sunny when I arrived. It was 75 degrees. It is gorgeous now. And we're standing in, in this wonderful sort of sauna, frankly, because it's a beautiful studio over at, at Ibble, northwest corner of the South by Southwest Convention Center. But the sun is beating right on us, which right now is fantastic. It is. <laughs> because, yes, it's been 35 degrees. <laughs> so, so awesome to see you all. How long, how long are you both staying? Can we, can we find you anything cool? What do you, what do you have going on for the next few days? Well, I'm actually participating in a panel workshop and we're going to be showing exactly how the technology works. What we do basically is a way of recording people in 3D using AI. So you can then see those actors, performers, whatever, musicians in augmented reality or in virtual reality. Uh -huh. When uh, and where? Because I need it's to... An, it's in the Marriott on uh, Sunday morning. So right if, uh, if you want to take a look at what other creators are doing, just come, come over and... Take a look at that. Fantastic. And you're here for how long? I'm going to stay here until Tuesday. Nice. So. Wonderful. And? I'm just staying one day talks. longer. I am going to be here until Wednesday, and I'll be doing a couple of panels on unofficial panels at the Omni on Monday regarding material risks in ESG and outpacing the market, things like that. Um, but I'm just here to, you know, have fun, do, see the eat good food, watch like the film festivals that are right. going on. Right, yeah. right. Let me invite you both then. I mean, it occurs to me there's a there's a perfect opportunity here. Assuming this gets published in time, which I think it does. <laughs> to, tomorrow, we're doing Funded House at Midwest House. Of course, Rainy. Everybody go to Rainy. Rainy every night is just off the hook. Rainy tomorrow at 1 o'clock has got Backstage Capital, Lighthouse Capital, uh, Arlen, uh, and a bunch of great people talking about diversity in VC. And then later... We're doing a, a panel with a bunch of investors about the media industry. Uh, and we sort of turn it into funding house, investor house, uh, for lack of a better way to put it. So we'd love to see you all there. Very nice to meet you. How do, how do people connect with you, Rafa, outside of, the, outside of on Ibble? What's, what's the company? Find you online. Give us, give us some perspective. Yeah, you can find us at Holograms. It's just spelled like holograms, but with a V. Right. Uh, so volumetric holograms. And you can find me as uh, Rafa Maloney or Rafa Pages. That's actually my name. And on LinkedIn or on Twitter, you can follow me there. Nice. And Iris, Summit Capital? Yeah, Summit Capital. If you Google it, uh, it'll definitely show up. And uh, you can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, just my first and last name, Iris Dwan. Right on. Yep. Paul O'Brien, Media Tech Ventures, here at Ibble in Austin with South by Southwest. Have a great time, everybody.